Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, it's about 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning, and here we are in the wonderful little community of 29 Palms, which is located about 50 miles northeast of Palm Springs in the Morongo Basin. Now, I come here a lot just to kind of hang out. I love this place. But we're here today to document something very exciting that is happening in this community of 29 Palms. And here to bring us up to speed on what this is all about is... Dave Meyer. Dave. And Beth Wiederhold. And Beth. And you all have invited us to be here today to talk about something very exciting, something that you all are very proud of here in your community. How did all of this get started? We started as a group of four or five, six merchants, concerned because our little town was dying, but more concerned because we'd lost our pride, the pride that the pioneers had. And we said, how do we get that back? And whatever we do for ourselves will then benefit our visitors. And one of our members, Tim Terrell, said, you know, murals sometimes bring pride in a community. And I had just read an article in the Smithsonian about Chimanus, British Columbia, that had the same problem and did historical murals. And it started. So you came up with the idea of murals. Now this is, you're all wearing these shirts, Action Council for 29 Palms. This was just one thing that you True. decided to do. The Merchants uh, Committee, we realized there were a lot of things to do, a big cleanup campaign, urging uh, merchants and residents to paint, spruce up, and then also the mural project. And the mural project sort of took on a life of its own. We realized that was going to be a really big project that was going to take a lot of time. And so a group of us started the Action Council for 29 Palms just for beautification and revitalization. And you had to sell everybody in town on the idea. <laughs> was that hard to do? Well, <laughs> at first, of course, there was a lot of uh, concern uh, that just painting pic pictures on walls wasn't going to do much. But uh, as soon as we had accomplished this mural, the first mural, uh, all the questions were over. I well, mean, it took just one project to show what we really meant because we were talking about excellence. Let's go over and take a closer look. How did you come up with the idea for what these murals would be? Well, this particular, we, we set as, as a philosophy uh, wanting to retell our history and our, our ecological foundation here. Because we are in the desert, and the desert is a very fragile environment, so uh, it's, it's a challenging place to live and a, a challenging place to, uh, to be. So we wanted people to know more about that. So uh, using that theme, then, we, have, we've, we are telling the history of our town and the history of the, of the desert in general. And this first one, this was the first mural, right? This was the first one. This was about Bill and Francis Key. And, and this actual, the, the topic was selected by our first artist, who was Dan Sawatsky from Tremainous, British Columbia. He came to 29 Palms to do some research. And after a couple of days, he shared this, this, uh, this story with us. And we, we thought it was a perfect beginning and then he uh, went on to do this mural which was an instant success and from there we, we've uh, continued on. Now this was done in what year? Uh, 1994. Two years ago, almost two years ago to this month. So this was the first one there. there are, we are now currently painting our eighth mural. Eighth mural. Yes. Uh huh. And I understand you want, you're shooting for 29. We're, 29 yeah, murals and 29 pots. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we have to shoot for. And we have to say that the historical themes have brought back that pioneer pride. Uh, school children are coming to visit, visitors are stopping. I think one of the things that showed us that the local people really loved it, last Christmas one of our clubs has traditionally sold Christmas trees in one of the lots where a mural is, and they set up their Christmas tree lot as usual. We had dozens of phone calls from irate locals saying, they've hidden the mural, I had visitors, I wanted to take pictures. Mm. We knew it So worked. the community has really, oh. very quickly. Oh. Very, uh, it, 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 it's been stunning to see how, how much personal community pride they've taken as a result of this. And they're funded only by this community. We have had no public funding whatsoever. Okay. The people in this community have paid for every single mural. Now we've come just a few blocks downtown to our next mural and tell us a little bit about this one. Well this one is Neighbors in Nature. This one is about the flora and the fauna and all the all our neighbors who live here in the in the terrain around 29 Palms and so there's something that represents all the animals and the little beans that uh, make this their home. So you've got 
down in the bottom, I notice you've got them all spelled out. Right. There's there's a, a a legend there on the bottom that that gives you a, a shadow of effect of all of them. And so when when visitors come here, they can look at the shadow and they can know what what kind of things that they're looking at. Now we brought a fellow with us to this mural because your claim to fame is what? I'm the dirty man, the grounds man. You keep the grounds that's right clean in front of all of these things. Yes, sir. I guess that's very, very important, isn't it? Well, the murals are beautiful and uh, trash, uh, weeds, they de detract from it. Yeah. So we do our best to keep them clean. So what, you just bring a rake and rake it and weed it and clean it? and Rake it and weed it and clean it, that's it. Well, you've done a wonderful job of it. Thank you, Hugh. This is important, isn't it? Well, it, it's critical and more importantly, when we're doing it, uh, for Bucky is in charge of getting the walls pre prepared so we have to sandblast them and there's a lot of prior work before we ever, any paint ever goes on the wall. Well, you put the murals up there. Before the wall even goes, every single wall has to be prepared and that's what Bucky does. He makes sure that everything is done perfectly so the artist can go to work as uh, it's going to be a beautiful thing and we want to make sure it lasts for a long time. We have visitors coming every day. Every day filming is going on here. So uh, Bucky makes the rounds and makes sure everything is uh, letter perfect uh, on a regular basis. So you mean people would come and like pose? Oh, constantly. And... Every day. There's never a day that there aren't people in front of the murals uh, coming to visit and to enjoy them and to learn. Well, this is what you wanted to have. That's what it was all about. And it's it coming true. Absolutely before our eyes. Before our eyes. As our mural tour continues, We've come to a really neat one. This one's very colorful. This is a very special one, Huell, because it's done by our own Tim O'Connor, a local artist, uh -huh. our first local artist that submitted and was accepted. And he just did a fantastic job. This was his first mural, believe it or not. And what's this one called? This one is called the Jack Cones, the Flying Constable. This uh, was truly a flying constable who had an airplane and uh, patrol the area in his plane and actually they say he could even touch the top of the car with the wing of his plane when he was chasing a criminal. <laughs> and this was back in? This was uh, back in the early 1900s or wow. I should say late 1930s. So really what you've done is you have have you, you get people up on your murals who are very much a part of the history. Absolutely, and Tim knew Jack Cones and has his gun and his badge, and he's very close to that family, so that made it special also. Uh, he really wanted to do Jack Cones. What'd you say, JP? And he flew in that plane too. The guy, the who, local kids, yeah, Tim O'Connor. The artist who did this the artist, actually flown in the plane. He flew all over in that plane, and some of the kids, even the artist, has been up in that plane. Ah. Yeah. Well, as a local, how do you feel about all this? Fantastic. It's just the whole town is behind it. It's yeah. just, it's something that we didn't know we could do. Yeah. It is. It's just too good now, to be Now, what true. do you mean that we didn't know we could do? Well, we didn't know the town would all come together like this, and it is. It's all, the whole town is behind it, and anybody touches a mural, they're in deep trouble. <laughs> deep trouble. <laughs> okay, another mural, another part of the community that is very important to 29 Palms history, which is the United States Marine Corps, based here since, I guess, the 1940s in large numbers. Right. This is the world's largest Marine Corps base. It's, the, uh, it's called the Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center. And this mural pays tribute to the desert st veterans of De Desert Storm. And we had a huge parade, went right down Adobe Road, and we wanted to commemorate that parade. And so we did that with this mural. It's 100 feet long, 25 feet high on the far end down here. It was done by Chuck Kaplinger, who has moved to 29 Palms since he did this, this uh, uh, mural. And uh, it's a basically a collage of photographs from the parade day itself. So what do you do? You get the artist here and you get them hooked into 29 Palms and they ended up moving here to live? Well, they, they find it such a beautiful place to be and the climate's so wonderful and the, uh, it's just a, a great place to enjoy. And so they, they t after they spend a few weeks painting, they obviously want to live here. So they, sometimes they do. Well, I got to tell you, as a former Marine, this really, this, this does something. This is, this is very dramatic here. Well, what was particularly dramatic also was our dedication that night. We had three uh, generals here. Uh, we had the full uh, Marine Corps band, uh, big fireworks demonstration, and there wasn't a dry eye in the, in, in, in the audience, yeah. about uh, 500 people for the dedication that night. Well, this is part of the history and the pride 
not only of 29 Palms, but of the United States Marine Corps. Absolutely. Well, this commemorates when they came back from Desert Storm, and it, normally it takes about an hour to come up the highway to get to the, to the base. That, uh, during those trips, those buses took three hours because of the people welcoming them home that were in the streets uh, to welcome them back. And so this, this mural commemorates that, that experience. Now, this is one of your favorites. This is, truly. This uh, is in memorial to Dr. James B. Lucky, a physician from Pasadena, who sent many of his patients here. They were uh, men that had been gassed in World War I. They had to have a perfect climate to survive, and he found 29 Palms, and these men were our pioneers. They brought their families, raised their families here, and that's where that pioneer spirit and that pioneer pride comes from. So I'm reading this here that Dr. Lucky moved here from Pasadena? No, he did have a home here, but he still kept his practice in Pasadena. He sent his patients here. Oh, who had been gassed who during been World gassed War I. War. Yes. So this man is responsible for sending yes. a lot of the early pioneers yes. to 29 That's Palms. That's right. That's We call him the father of 29 Palms. Now, how do you choose where you're going to put the murals? Because I would think that every store in town now wants a mural. Well, there is a, a great interest in the murals, but we select a theme, and then we select an artist, and then we try to match a wall that connects with, with that, that theme and, and a background that looks attractive to the artist. But you also want it to be able to be seen. Oh, absolutely. And so well, we have lots of walls available in 29 Palms, and we just matched the whole thing up, and it's, so far it's worked pretty well. All right, who are these people over here? We got some onlookers. Howdy. How are you doing? Good. Now, do you live here? Yes, this is our building. I'm Hilda oh, Rashford. Oh, wait a minute. This is your and this building. this is my husband. Come on, let's Dr. get you all out here. And Wayne? Come on out here. Come on. So how did you, how do you feel about having this mural? Well, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. I think it's wonderful, and do I'm you, glad you're doing this. Do you get a lot of people coming by now? To... Yes, we do. We do quite a lot, and I think it's, well, to me, he kind of looks like Dr. Rashford, so we kind of think it's a good... <laughs> wait a minute. Good... Let's get the doctor. You're the yeah. eye doctor now. And you're standing here next to Dr. Lucky. And I think well, I, I said I should just uh, put a little white beard on him and uh, it would pass for my own mural. And maybe lose a little hair up yeah. on the top. Well, I'm doing that already. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's, great. it's yeah. wonderful. He did, he did quite, a, quite a few nice things here for the people in the community. I think it's uh, wonderful. Back in the old days when, uh, you know, the people were having lots of lung problems and things. and. Uh, uh, donated Lucky Park for the kids, and he's done a lot of nice things, so I was pretty proud to have him on our, on our building. Now we're all standing here in front of this next mural, counting the palm trees. <laughs> There's supposed to be 29 in this one. Well, the, all the time people ask us, so where are the 29 palms? And I said, well, I'm not really sure, except until we painted this mural, and we know there are 29 palm trees in this mural. But JP, you found 30. <laughs> I have double vision. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the, what's the story behind this particular mural? Well, this is the Oasis of Mara, and this is why people started gathering in this location, because there is a natural oasis here, and water is uh, the, what we need for life, and, and our native peoples uh, started here, and it's just about, the oasis is located about a quarter of a mile away, and we're depicting the history of the, the Oasis of Mara. Wow. And then these are what, the and, early and, and, and surveyors? The, well, this was uh, Colonel Washington, who was with the Geodetic, Surve uh, Geodetic Survey, who, who came through and uh, surveyed the area, put the titles on, and, and did the first maps. And look, you can see up here, Louie, here are the lights that, that light this thing at night, because driving through here at night, it's, uh, it's really dramatic. Well, it, they, they are just beautiful at night. They take on a whole new personality at night. And we, we light all of them so that our visitors in the evening can stroll through the community and enjoy our murals at night as well. And you clear all of this area out around them so that there's a real nice shot of them. Well, we have close access so everybody can get to them and they can park in front. That's perfectly fine and we want them to enjoy them and yeah. come at all, all, all hours. Uh, so that's why we're here. Beth, come over here a minute. And, and, and we've got the kids too. What's the deal on the kids here today? 
Well, they're mural babies. Okay. Mural babies. Mural babies, the 29 Palms. They saw the birth of the first mural, and they've been to every mural unveiling, and they've even gotten to paint a few brush strokes on three of the murals. Really? You actually stroke. put a stroke up there on there? Is it pretty much fun? Yes. So really, it's a big deal when these things are dedicated. Oh, absolutely. Sarah's already told me she wants to be an artist when she grows up, and she wants to paint a mural in 29 Palms. Ah, well, <laughs> there's probably going to be room for one if she, if she hurries up. Let's come on over here with the kids. That is a big deal, isn't it, when they're, when they're formally dedicated? A oh, absolutely. The community turns out for that. We have the band, we have speakers, and we've done something that we don't think any other town has done. We actually have an unveiling. Uh, Judy Dunn, who's one of our early settlers, sewed together, I don't know how many, king-size sheets, and we actually have a total veiling of the building. And I mean, everybody's seen it being painted, but then the day of the dedication, it's covered. And then we have what we call the roof dogs, the guys that are brave enough to get up on top. And at the right moment, the, the veil is lifted, and then the artist signs his name with a big So flourish. this really is truly a community Absolutely. kind Absolutely. of an effort. Hundreds and hundreds of people, people participate. And uh, we'll at an, un, at an unveiling or a dedication, we will have anywhere from 300 to 800 people at that, at that ceremony. And the participation goes beyond that, Ewell. People in the community have the artists to dinner. You know, they're here for two weeks or a month. People have them to dinner. People bring them coffee and donuts, donuts at the site. Uh, children come and visit at the site. So it is a community It's effort. a great education for the children, too. My favorite story is my daughter now, when we're driving through town, if you see a blank wall, some scaffolding and construction equipment sitting next to it, she says, oh, look, Mom, a new mural. Mm -hmm. A kid in any other town would say that's a construction site, not to her. Though. She says, yeah. that's a new mural, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Now, J.P.'s hard at work over here. What are you doing, J.P.? Well, there are new people here to town. They love our murals, and she would like to know how to purchase them. So, of course, I had to get the name and telephone number. So what so did we... you do? Just start noticing the murals? Well, we uh, moved here in August. We're with the Marine Corps, and we moved here in August. And, of course, they stand out. They're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of history, about 29 palms right here on the road. That you didn't know about. We did not know about. Well, now, how long are you going to be here with the Marines? About three years. So you're going to be here long enough to see more and more and more of them. Well, we hope so. Yeah. Can you draw? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you can? Well, good. We'll, get, we'll sign you up. They're looking for young artists now. <laughs> Chicken that. But it is interesting, isn't it? It is. It's the first time I've been in a community that really puts the art out on the walls like this that we can see yeah. and take advantage of. And it's also nice that you're allowing us the chance to purchase the art. Oh, yeah. One of a kind prints. Well, you beautiful. Be the one that paid for it. The local people buy the, the right. prints, and that's how we pay for the putting murals oh, up. Oh, is that how it's done? Oh, yes. We have 150 signed prints by the uh, artist, and it, we sell them for $125. And that gives us our money to put it up. It costs us about 18000 every time we put a picture on the wall. Wow, I'd forgotten to, I had forgotten to ask how these were financed. By the community. No public funding, no grants. It's all out of the pockets of the community people. It's an investment limited, in the community. As an investment in the community, that's right. We, we're collecting art, but it's really an investment in this community. Now, JP, I heard you saying this was one of your favorites. Yes. It just is the old town of 29 and what got it started, the miners up in the, in the uh, mountains around here as you can see we're surrounded by mountains uh -huh. for out in the middle of the desert that's pretty good and all the kids when they came back from Saudi they said they'll never complain about 29 again because we have mountains not just sand for breakfast lunch and dinner <laughs> <laughs> they're the mountains right over there in fact 29 palms of course actually Louie right over here we're looking right into the Joshua Tree National Park so that's another wonderful thing about 29 Palms. You can come here and you're just literally a mile away 
from a national park. National park yeah. and it, it dedicated as a national park here just two years ago, and we get about a million and a half visitors a year coming to the park. And that's one of the reasons for the murals as well, so that what they, when in addition to enjoying the park, they can come into town and enjoy uh, learning something of the history of 29 Palms. Well, now this is uh, a kind of a, the early. Uh... This, is, this tells the, the mining the mining district story. There are gold fields here to the to the east. And it, this started with this, uh, there was a, a photograph of this camping tent, or this miner's tent called Dirt, and it was said Dirty Sock Camp. And we thought, it, well, you could almost uh, feel those uh, dirty socks that must have been around. Uh, actually, they use those socks to help uh, filter the gold. So, but anyway, this is a collage photograph uh, yeah, that is, uh, depicts the story of the mi miners in 29 Palms. I never knew there was gold around. Oh, here. there's gold in them, Lar Hills. Uh, there's there's a, not there. still gold. Here. Well, uh, yes, there. They do a lot of dry washing out here, and there is still gold in in the neighborhood. We, people are a lot of hobbyists and uh, do come uh, dry washing for gold here. And see, this is what I love about the desert. I mean, look at the clouds and the blue sky and the clean air. Look over here. You can look over and see the the mountains. And the sky and the clouds. Well, the mountains at that end down there—that's 35 miles from here. Really? 30, you can like you could touch them today. So that's well, that's why we live in 29 Palms. It's just uh, such a beautiful place to live. I think you all need to sign me up for a member of the Chamber of Commerce, though. I'm getting pretty excited about it myself. Good. You would make a very good ambassador for 29. <laughs> when Dave was talking about the mountains, I thought, you know, we have 360 degrees. No matter where you look, it's a beautiful view. Yeah. And clear and clean and wonderful. Now we've run into the lady who works over here at the, what is this? The Circle K. Circle K. And there's where you work, and there's the mural right, right there. Right, right here. So do you get a lot of... Uh... Oh, yeah, a lot of tourists. Um, a lot of Europeans come here. Uh, matter of fact, I almost wish I was bilingual, but we get a lot of uh, Europeans. They stop, and they'll get something to drink, and they'll look at the mural, and they walk up, and they um, read how, and they'll ask what, what presented us to do this. And... It's done a lot for us. Well, now let's stand over here, and I want to get the spiel that you give them when they when they ask you about it. What do you say? Um, that there's been a lot of um, old miners here that started back in 1928, 1930s. Um, my husband's um, great aunt was one of the miners in the monument there that had the Golden Bee Mine. So I get a lot of history. My father-in-law's still alive, and he tells about how they got sick off their old their own cooking and. Just how they, and they did make gold. There was a lot of gold. So you're a native who are. No, I'm married to one. <laughs> oh. Now, what is this? This is a, um, a piece that was picked out by the um, Indians that came through 29 Palms. They were walking from Massachusetts to Santa Barbara for peace. And they were told along the way that they needed to stop in 29 Palms. And so they came here and they spent oh about three or four days here in our community when was and, this um this was last, mm, uh, in January. the spring in january, january they came it? back right. again at the end of february so this has just been recent just recent this year and they were so thrilled with our community here and had such a peace here that this represents the north the uh the south the east and the west this is symbolic and the um the, the chief this is sacred ground now. It's been blessed by the uh, the group of Indians and the chief that was uh, that was here. They had an official uh, pipe ceremony. Really? Yeah, a real Indian pipe ceremony on that sacred ground. And the sculpture is by local sculptor Simi Daba, who lives in Joshua Tree. And we went and selected that, placed it on the site nice to here. mark the site. So it's this is growing into more than just a mural now. Now you've done it. Well, we've had th uh, we've had two new art galleries have opened since we started doing this, and the whole community is beginning to enjoy a, a, a deeper meaning of, and an expression through the arts. And our, our murals have spawned that. I never had thought about that. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely, absolutely true. Absolutely true. There's been a lot of um, new ideas come to town and. It sparked a real different interest than, than what we've had in the past. This is how we start a project. And our artist first does a maquette, which is a painting that will become then transferred onto the wall and ultimately become the mural. But we start, it starts with a painting, and from that we do the, we do the artwork on the building. And it's 98 feet by 14 feet when it gets up on the wall. This one is. 
Wow. Tell us about what you're doing here and how you do it. Well, basically, I was uh, invited and very honored to be invited to uh, 29 Palms by the uh, Action Council to uh, do a piece that pays homage and tribute to uh, William and Elizabeth Campbell. And they were pioneers that uh, really sort of exemplify the, uh, the spirit of, of this whole community, the idea of people who really just went out on their own and, and really just pursued their goals and their aspirations and dreams. And Had you ever been to 29 Palms first, before? First time when I was invited by uh, Beth Wiederhold and uh, Dave Meyer to come down and visit the town and uh, I just fell in love with it. And I'll often just look out over the horizon at the mountains over in this section here and to, uh, you know, look at the colors and see what colors I'm going to use as a source of, as a model actually, you know, yeah. to, and, uh, as a source of inspiration too, you know. It's, it's uh, not easy. To, it's uh, very easy to be inspired here, you know. <laughs> a lot of nice people you've yeah, met out people, here. People are absolutely fantastic. I mean, the Action Council to the uh, people who live here, they'll stop and, and talk, and it's just it's just nice. I mean, they're just they like, don't bother well, you, do they? No, not at all. Yeah, because I've learned over the years to talk and work at the same time, so <laughs> I'm able to do that. But uh, it's just great. The people are really supportive, and that's one appeal for this project for me is that. You know, they've done this on their own. They didn't count on, you know, any kind of art programs or, you know, that you might have in cities, whatever. They're just doing it on their own, and this is kind of a labor of love. And for any artist, I mean, that's like the biggest honor to be asked to be a part of it, you know. So I'm like thrilled and uh, honored at the same time. Now these are the some of the originals right here, aren't yes, they? These yes. Are the, these are the hardcore believers from the very beginning. Yes, they are the believers. In fact, one of our first stories talked about that. The uh, the dreams of a few became the reality of many was one of our first leads for our okay, stories. Okay, well let's get a let's get a shot here, Louie, of everybody. Hey, these are the hardcore bunch right here. These are the people who believed in it from the very beginning. These are the ones who started it all. These were the pioneers of 29 Palms who are carrying on in the pioneer tradition. Give us a wave. There they are. A really nice group of people with big plans for their little town. So the good citizens of 29 Palms have already accomplished what they've set out to do because not only have they begun to fill their desert community with beautiful historic murals, but they've also quickly rekindled a sense of pride among the residents as well. And we join in the salute to 29 Palms pioneers, past and present. We've had two new art galleries have opened since we started doing this, and the whole community is beginning to enjoy a, a, a deeper meaning of, and an expression through the arts, and our, our murals have spawned that. I never had thought about that. Yeah. That's absolutely, absolutely true. Absolutely true. There's been a lot of um, new ideas come to town, and it sparked a real different interest than, than what we've had in the past. Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.